coastal town of Southport, which attracts thousands of visitors every year, doesn't have an RNLI lifeboat station. Surprising, isn't it? But there is a lifeboat and a crew, and they're celebrating tonight thanks to the support of one very special fundraiser. Our reporter, Victoria Grimes, has more. Every day for more than 30 years, Southport lifeboats have been on call around the clock for those in trouble or lost at sea on one of the most perilous coastlines in the UK. It's run entirely by volunteers like Coxon yeah, Nick yeah, Porter. So we're, we're, we're what's known as an independent lifeboat station. There's many of us around the country. There's many in the region as well. Uh, we're not part of the RNLI, uh, which means we have to raise our own money. My family have been involved since day one. Um, so Keith come down, uh, he's my uncle, he joined the crew soon after he dragged my dad into it. And I have memories of being in the old lifeboat station when I was a toddler, uh, helping brush up, helping wash off. So uh, it was sort of in my blood that I was going to join. I joined on my 60th birthday. But you must be scared sometimes with it, especially when the conditions are quite treacherous out here. There are scary moments, but I have to look after the crew I've got with me, so uh, I don't normally show that side. The RNLI pulled out of Southport in 1925. It was to be 62 years before the town got its own rescue service, mainly thanks to the tireless determination of one lady who lost her own son at sea. Kath Wilson's son, Geoffrey, died in 1987 after a boat trip went horribly wrong. He was just 18. Jeffrey had been missing over 24 hours before his body was found. He was swept up at Blackpool Beach. It was, it was heartbreaking because I felt that things had been different. He wouldn't have been there on that day. There'd have been a lifeboat. So I decided there and then to start a fund off to get our own lifeboat. Much of the money's come from a charity shop Kath started 17 years ago. It's grown from just one room to a huge operation. She's now raised more than a million pounds, enough to build a brand new lifeboat station. My one ambition was to build this lifeboat house. And finally it's here. And I, I can't tell you how pleased I was when I walked, went past and see it all set up. I just sat in the park, parking bay and cried. Why did you cry? Brought it all back to me. How we started it because of Jeff. And the fact that hopefully nobody will lose a life. I always get a message off and they always ring me up and tell me when they've been out. And it, puts, it gets that lump in your throat, especially when they know that they've done good and they've saved someone or they've all rushed from their jobs to go out, left the families at home to go and do it, to risk their own lives to help others. Well, over the last 30 years, the crew here have saved countless lives and brought more than 400 people to safety. Now, it's quite mild today. The water's not too choppy at all. The sun's been shining. But sometimes those conditions can be very, very different. The new station replaces the old one built in the 1800s that wasn't even heating. For the crews, it'll make a huge difference. It's not warm, <laughs> we're both here with our hands, saying how cold our hands are, but it's so to have that, to be able to go, oh, back. To go back and be able to warm up, it's just, yeah, yeah. going to be brilliant. We operated in the old place for 33 years. No facilities, no toilets, no running water at first. Um, and now we're spoiled, really, with hot water and the kitchens. When they stripped the clothes off to get the rubber suits on. The clothes were all parked in the damp, no washing facilities or toilets. So you basically didn't drink too much tea before you went. It's no problem now, I can drink myself to death. Me cast the reason we're all here. She, it was her idea in the first place to start the service and we, we were able to come out here with the best equipment we can buy um, and provide the best service we can. I mean, really, the lifeboat belongs to the people of Southport. They're the ones that's donated the money come in and bought stuff, brought all the goods in. So really, it does belong to the people of Southport. Not me. Well, we are here tonight at that brand new Southport lifeboat station. Here it is, it's a magnificent building. And one or two people from the lifeboat family have turned out to see it. Isn't it lovely?
lovely because you guys really are a family here, aren't you? Keith, we saw you in my report a little bit earlier then. But it is this a family because everyone I've met here is a porter like you, pretty much, it feels. Yeah, por porters and Heskers and Shawcrofts and, yeah, there's a lot of family involvement, yeah. yeah. Which is so lovely to see. I mean, I can see Nick over there. I can see Lucy, who's your niece, I think. Is that right? She's my daughter. Oh, she's your daughter, is it? Yeah. I can't keep up. I can't keep up. We've got John over there who can now have as many cups of tea as he likes because he's got a toilet <laughs> to go to. We saw him in the report as well. And lots of the younger members who are going to be taking over in the future, like Ronnie, Keith's son as well. Can you see yourself getting involved? when you're a bit older yeah you can what's the best thing about about this place would you say uh probably the size of it it's amazing isn't it? it's huge yeah. what's it going to mean to everybody it's just a nicer place to be there's heating hot showers and things and uh we're able to fit all the equipment inside whereas previously it was stored outside yeah and, and just like, I mean, it was a mild day yesterday when we were filming with you and, and I was out on the boat with you, but it was freezing. And to think of you guys coming back in and not having anywhere to dry your kiss after that, it's just... We, we used to washing off under the hose pipe, <laughs> now we're getting in the shower. It's, it takes it a used to, yeah. yeah, and I'm very glad yeah. you didn't make me get hosed off yesterday. Goodness <laughs> me. And the lady who's made this possible is, of course, Kath, who we saw in uh, the piece earlier. Kath, how do you feel when you when you see everyone here and so happy to Wonderful. see it? It's absolutely marvellous to see it finished. And you've got Geoffrey with you, your grandson. Yeah. Geoffrey, what do you think? It's amazing. It's amazing. And he's got, let me see your little top here. Let's have a look at your little top. See, look at that mini crew, it says, mini crew. And Patrick's here as well today. He was with your son, Geoffrey, yeah. um, that night. You were out on the boat with him, that's, Patrick. That's and right, yes. She's done so much, hasn't she? Oh, she has. Unbelievable. An amazing lady. Well, Kath, there is one little surprise for you tonight that Keith's going to tell you about now. Well, I think there's so many people who, who can be thanked for this building, but nobody more so than you, Kath. And uh, everybody here has decided that we'd like to dedicate the building to you and, and to Geoffrey and... and uh... Oh, are you OK? Yeah, I'm fine. How do you feel? I can't. Speechless. 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 That's unlike you. I know. I've only known you for a couple of days. Yeah. I know that's not like you to be speechless. It's marvellous. Beautiful. Gosh. Wonderful. Well, everyone here, Kath, is so grateful to you and all the people of Sandport yeah. as well. A round of applause for Kath. Yeah. Thank you. Back to you guys now, the studio. Absolutely richly deserved. A wonderful fitting uh, naming there. Wonderful Lo to see. Lovely, lovely story. And great to see the young generation of lifesavers there too. Superb. Um